Today I'm going to be using the excellent Luminar to transform this very nice but quite plain landscape image into this beautiful and dramatic sunrise scene. I love Luminar. It allows you to add a whole host of professional effects to your images without having to be a Photoshop guru. We will start by opening up our filters panel. Look at all those lovely filters. Our first one will be the develop filter. The develop filter has our basic controls for setting the mood of the image, the tone if you like. For this image I'll make the temperature slightly more blue, like so. And bit by bit add a tad of magenta into the tint. So minus 15 for the temperature and 24 for the tint. A nice start. Now I'm just going to bring my exposure down a little bit. I like to bring my exposure down in most of my images so that I've got some highlights to play with so that I can add detail later. Minus 0.87 seems to be fine. Next a little contrast just to kick off the drama. About there. Next bring the highlights right down to minus 100 so I have some separation with the whites in a moment. Now just add a little bit of shadow. Bringing down the highlights and upping the shadows a little bit will give us a slight HDR effect. Now we can bring our whites all the way to the top. Now we have really defined highlights. All we need to do is bring these blacks down to separate the true blacks from the shadows. I don't think this image needs clarity at this stage, so I'll leave that alone. So as you can see, using the develop filter gives us detail in the sky. We've got nice highlights on the mountains and the ground here and a nice separation of tones with nicely defined shadows and blacks. Already the image is looking quite dramatic. Next I just want to even out the colour a little bit. So I'll grab the saturation vibrance filter and bring the saturation down a little bit as further operations will be adding saturation. Minus 45 will do. And then bit by bit Bit, bring up the vibrance slowly by eye to even out the color and I think 50 is fine okay that looks like a very good base for adding the rest of our effects so next I'd like to increase the definition of the sky and at the same time enhance the foliage the greenery and the river getting rid of a bit of the shine on the water and the best filter to do this will be the polarizing filter as that is what it's supposed to do in real life and as we bring it up the sky is becoming more and more defined and the glare on the water has disappeared that really worked now I'm going to increase the illusion of depth in the distance by smoothing out the distant parts of the image whilst preserving the detail in the foreground we can very easily achieve this effect by using the structure filter. To create a slight blur, all we have to do is reduce the structure amount. A negative structure will make everything smooth. Now we don't want everything smooth, we want our foreground to retain its detail. This is where we can take advantage of one of Luminar's most powerful features. Every one of the filters can have its own mask, which allows you to localize any filter to any part of the image however you like. All we have to do is go to the filter and click on the arrow, the paintbrush, and in this case select gradient mask. Then just click where we want the effect to be applied the most. Then drag down to the point where we would like the effect to be applied the least, like so, or maybe there. Now as you can see our mountain range in the distance is nice and smooth, whilst our foreground has retained its detail. Very nice. Let's click this again to turn the mask off. Lovely. So next I'd like to darken the sky and the top side areas here. To achieve this I'm going to use the vignette filter. Open our filters and grab the vignette and bring the amount right down to the bottom. That'll do. And then just increase the size a tad. I think about 60 will do. Then just alter the shape to flatten it out in the sky a little more. About there. 
And then we'll use the feather to make it a little softer so the transition is not so abrupt. I think that looks quite nice about there. Okay, that looks fine. Now I don't want the vignette in the bottom half. I'm only using it to add shape to the sky, so again, we'll take advantage of filter masks. Just click here and then grab our gradient mask. Click where we want the vignette to start fading out. Then drag down to set the vignette fade distance. Then just a little bit of vertical adjustment until it's in position. There we go. That's absolutely fine. Turn our gradient controls off. Looking lovely. It's still looking a little flat over here in the uh, highlighted areas and here in the sky. So I think I'm going to fix that with a white blacks filter right down the bottom. There it is, white blacks. Now I'm going to use the white slider just to bring up the very, very lightest colors. Take it slowly, bring it up bit by bit until it's right about there. That's fine, very nice indeed. There we go, now we've increased the highlights in the tops of our mountains where sunlight would fall. It's starting to shape up. And so, on to colour editing. The look I'm going for here is the early morning or evening golden hour, where you get lovely splashes of orange and yellow and red on the landscape. Let's add a hue saturation luminance filter. And starting with our hue, just move down the colours. So we'll move our red more towards magenta. This is like colour painting. Just small adjustments until it's right about there. Next we'll select the oranges and move them towards the reds. Again, bit by bit, shifting those oranges by eye until they're about right. Yellows I think I'll just move slightly towards the oranges. Not too much. Now the greens I'm going to push all the way over to the blues to give some separation between the yellows, oranges and greens. I want the greens to look bluey green or more green. Now I think I'll have a little play with the sky. First pushing the aqua slightly towards the blue. I think about there's fine. And then bring the blue all the way over towards the aqua. Now I have a beautiful teal sky, which looks really nice against this orangey greeny landscape. Very nice indeed. I think that'll do for the hue sliders. Now looking at this, I don't think I need to do anything with the saturation. The saturation between the colours, the different colours, is absolutely fine. So I think we'll skip that and go straight over to luminance where I'd like to create more contrast, so I'm going to try separating the yellow from the green. And so, here we go again, slowly does it, bit by bit, push the yellow up to, I think, around there. And to separate the greens from the yellows, I'm going to bring them down quite a bit. This image is more about a dramatic effect than accuracy. And we're done, very good. That's looking fine. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is concentrate on this mountain range to see if I can bring out more of the golden hour effect here. To achieve this, I'm going to grab a color balance and going straight to the shadows, I'm going to increase the reds a little bit, about there, and also just increase the blues a tad. I think that's plenty. Now in the midtones, going to definitely increase the reds. I'm actually going to bring these up quite a bit. I think about 21 will be enough. Magenta green I'm going to leave and the same with the yellow blue. Next, select the highlights, and in the highlights, I'm just going to add a little touch of magenta. Just a little bit, that's great. Now that really has 
given the whole image a lovely golden look. I think I'd be hard pressed to make it look any golden to tell you the truth. Now, I don't want the effect in the foreground, I only want it in the mountains. So I think I'll bring out our old friend, the gradient mask. So place where we want the start of the effect and then drag down to just over the tops of the mountains. I think just about there. And that's it, that's where we're going to place our colour balance effect using the gradient mask. I think that looks gorgeous, we've just got the effect in this area. Nice. The eagle-eyed among you may have noticed we have repetition here and here and here caused by the cloning of the size of the image to make it fit the aspect ratio. What we're going to do is we're going to use the tools and clone and stamp to get rid of the repetition. This is another excellent tool that Luminar has. It's great for all sorts of um, retouching jobs from portraits to landscapes. Okay, it's saying click to select the source. So, first of all, as I'm going to fill this in with this, I'll click here to select my source. Then I'll right click and bring my brush size down. And then I just dab away in this area, bit by bit, dab, dab, dab. And it copies from the source to where I'm dabbing. Then I can press Alt and left click to set another source and continue dabbing away until we get to the point where we think we've sufficiently dabbed away the problem. It can take a while to get it right. You may have to redo parts you've done previously. But I think that little bit is sufficiently done. It doesn't look like that part. Now I'm just doing the same up here. Alt click and then just dab away and keep dabbing, moving up and across side to side and then slowly moving up the image bit by bit then just take out a few parts from this upper area that area now doesn't look exactly the same as that area also if we look here that is the same as that so I'll select my source here and then dab just a little bit just enough to make it look different like so that's nice that's cleaned up that area and now this bit looks the same as that bit. So here we go again. Grab source. Bit by bit, dabbing away. All we're trying to do is make it look realistic and unique. And that's all done. All we have to do now, it's all cleaned up, is to select done. And that will commit the change. Then once it's finished processing, we have our cleaned up image on its own new clone and stamp layer. Excellent. This whole edit has been leading up to adding a sun. Filters and sun rays. And right away we have a little sun on the screen. Let's click place sun center. Move our sun up into the sky just above the mountains. Just about there. Perfect. Click place sun center again. We have a glorious sun in the sky. And we're finished. We've taken a nice but quite plain landscape and with just a few effects turned it into a glorious sunrise. Fantastic. All that's left to do now, I think, is take a look at our work. Here we go. Just select the eye. And we have before. And we have after. And before and after. I think Luminar has done an absolutely excellent job. If you would like to have a play with Luminar, then check in the comments below where you will find a 10% discount code and a link to the software on the Skylum site.